What's going on, everybody? American Football Network here, and we have the football expert with us as well. And today we're doing our 2024 uh, SEC standings that we are predicting for the upcoming season. But before we get started, make sure you guys like and subscribe. Uh, help me reach that goal of 1,400 subscribers by the end of July. Also, go check out the football expert. Let them know how uh, where they can find you at. Yeah, you can find me. Just type in the football expert in YouTube. Uh, you can find me there. And then you can also type in the football expert in X or Twitter um, as well. So, yeah, you can find me in either spot. Yeah, so let's go ahead and jump into today's video. We have our SEC standings. We'll start at the bottom, number 16. We're just going to kind of fly through these um, until we get uh, about top 10, top 5. Uh, because, I mean, the bottom's pretty self-explanatory. Who you got yeah. at 16? 16, I think it's obvious. Yep. It's Vandy. Yeah. Vandy. Vandy had a lot of struggles last year um, with the loss of Ray Davis to Kentucky for that season. Um, it was a struggle throughout the season. Uh, they had a lot of work that they needed to do. Um, and A.J. Spawn was a disappointment. There's nothing that you can say other than that. Um, and overall, Vanderbilt's got a lot of work to do. I could see them maybe winning an SEC game or two, but you're even then, I just I, I don't see you get out of the last spot. So I don't either. I think it's one at the least. I think just overall on the season, Vanderbilt gets maybe three wins overall, four wins. Yeah. Um, not expecting a whole lot out of them. So moving on to number 15, who you got? Number 15, I got mistake. Um, even though Jeff Levy, I think, has some struggles when it comes to um, it, becoming a head coach and stuff like that, I think he could be a good head coach. But right now, this Miss State uh, team is in a rough position uh, when it comes to overall depth, uh, when it comes to overall anything. I think that Miss State has a lot of work to do, um, even at the quarterback position. Uh, you got Blake Shapin coming in. Uh, the Baylor transfer, I'm not a big fan of Shapin. Um, and you literally have no offensive returning starters and only two on the defense. I'm From a team that was that. already bad last yeah. year. Yeah. So, uh, Lebby's got a lot of work to do. And I, I, I don't know if I see a win on this SEC schedule. Obviously, you'll beat UMass and Eastern Kentucky, but a game against Arizona State on the road, Kenny Dillingham probably has a win there. I could see two wins, maybe three. Uh, may, you'll probably be Toledo. Uh, so even to, even Toledo could be a tough one. I know they lost no, their man. quarterback Daquan Finn to Baylor, but it could still be a, t a tough game for them. Yeah, I have Mississippi State at 15 as well. I just I don't expect a whole lot out of them. Um, I do think Levy can be a solid head coach, uh, but he's definitely going to have to rebuild for a while. And they're if they want him to to be good, they're going to have to give him a lot of time and a lot of patience with him because Miss State's a mess right now. Moving on, number 14. Who you got there? 14, I got um, your favorite team, the Carolina Gamecocks. <laughs> um, so it, Carolina just – this may be a six-win team. Like the, even though the third worst in the conference, this may be a six-win team. Um, you got in the non-conference Old Dominion, Akron, uh, Wofford, and Clemson. Uh, obviously the Clemson game is going to be difficult, but it's a rivalry game. Last year it went in Clemson's favor. The year before it went in South Carolina's favor. And both of those games were pretty close throughout it. Um, I could seven see. years before that also went in Clemson's favor. That, that is true, <laughs> but the five years before that went in South Carolina's favor. Yeah. So, um, But I at, least, I at least like to see it going a little more back and forth. Like when Ohio State or Michigan's rivalry is just so lopsided in one way or another, it's just no fun. Same thing with Notre Dame and USC or stuff like that. Either way. Uh, point mean is this. Lenore Sellers may be good at the end of the year. But when I'm looking at this early on SEC schedule at Kentucky, LSU, Old Miss, at Alabama, at Oklahoma, that's like the first half. I, I just, I just don't see it there. I just don't. I don't either. Especially losing the top two targets from last year and Juice mm -hmm. Wells and they, and uh, Xavier Leggett. He yeah. does have Nick Harbor, who's going to be a good wide receiver on the outside. Yeah. Um, but yeah. So for me at number fourteen, I have Arkansas. Um, I think Arkansas is a team who has. They have some potential. They bring in Taylor Green, the transfer from Boise State. He's a guy who's a very dual-threat quarterback in a different way than Jefferson was. Um, he's a little bit more elusive and quick and instead of more of a power runner like Jefferson. Um, but he's a guy who has a huge arm and can can hit a deep ball. The problem is his accuracy on those deep throws. Um, he needs to improve. And we said the same thing last year I did about him at Boise State. If he's got the deep ball accuracy, Boise State's going to be – uh, an elite offense, 
And, um, you know, I mean, he, he was a solid quarterback for him last year, but he, he couldn't hit the deep ball as accurately as you'd hope for. Maybe that'll change in Arkansas. The biggest thing for me when I look at Arkansas is that offensive line was a mess last year. And that was really the reason, uh, one of the big reasons for a, a lot of their struggles offensively last year. And that's something that Sam Pittman's going to have to fix. That's something that that is the one issue you want to have under a Sam Pittman coach team because he's, you know, that's what he specializes at. That's what he's best with and best at fixing. Um, and so I think it's a possible fix. I think defensively they're pretty solid, um, especially uh, when you look at Landon Jackson on the uh, defensive line. I think he's the big dog for them, uh, the big leader for them defensively. I think Arkansas can be a good team, but it's also too when you just look at the schedule. It's just a, a, a tough schedule that they got to go through. Um, and I just don't know if they're going to be able to, to do it. I think that this could be a solid team, although the record may not improve at all from last year. I, but I, I do think they'll be a better team than last year. So moving on to number 13. Number 13, I got the Hogs. Um, so we got um, – I got 13 and 14 swapped with what Lincoln has here. Um, I got the Hogs at 13. I just think that – when you're looking at Arkansas, I just see it a little bit better um, when it comes to the SEC. They got a home game um, in certain categories, like a home game against Tennessee, neutral side against Texas A&M, a home game against LSU. So I think that they could rack up a couple of wins there. Um, and obviously you have the Bobby Petrino in town, so that's yep. going to be interesting. Um, and you could see an improvement there. Like I think – I think that you're going to see some offensive improvement defensively. I could see a lot more struggles. Um, And just overall, this Arkansas team, they're in a rut. Unfortunately, Sam Pittman probably on the hot seat and probably going to be fired after this year. I do like the guy, uh, but overall you're in a tough spot. For sure. I I mean, I go back to Sam Pittman before I move on to my number 13 team. I think he's a great head coach. Um, I just think that I don't, I don't think he's good enough recruiting wise um and to to keep up in a conference like the SEC with a lesser with a team who doesn't have a lot of they're not going to help you a lot in recruiting you know it's not like you're Alabama and you have you know all this stuff that you can use to help recruit it's Arkansas it's a little bit tougher to recruit there in the first place and when you're not an elite recruiter it's going to be tough but I think um you see a guy like Sam Pittman go to a big 12 school or um you know, a smaller group or a bigger group of five school, I think he could be really good um, somewhere like yeah. that. Um, and that's what I love to see for him. But at me, uh, for me at number 13, I have South Carolina. Um, this is a team there, a, a pretty solid team um, roster wise. The problem is they just can never put it all together. Like I said, Lenore Sellers comes in the freshman. He's supposed to be the savior in Columbia. Um, I, I don't see it, especially early on in the season. Um, I mean, right out of the gate in week two, you're going on the road to Kentucky, which is going to be a tough game. Um, Kentucky, South Carolina always play each other pretty close. Um, Last year, South Carolina pulled it out 17-14. But they always play each other really close. Um, When I look at the South Carolina team, the strength is definitely the secondary where they return all their starters, um, but one. And so it's it's going to be something that – a situation I see with South Carolina where they may go five and seven again. I think the team will be a little bit better than it was last year, but with this schedule, I don't know if they will. I don't know if their record will improve any, but I don't, I don't think it's going to be a terrible year for them, but I think after this year, uh, they'll have, I think they'll have a, a pretty down year. I think they'll have a losing record this year. I don't have them at six and six. Um, and I think going into next year, Shane Beamer may be on the hot seat for them. So number 12, I got the Florida Gators. <laughs> Just simply put, um, when you're looking at this team, when you're looking at Billy Napier, um, they're just in a tough spot. They do bring back a lot of offensive weapons. Uh, You do bring back uh, some of your top wide receivers other than Ricky Pearsall, which obviously that's a big loss. Huge loss. um, You do bring back some of your other big pieces. (laughs) Excuse me. Um, But just simply put, Grant Mertz is not a bad quarterback, but he's not elite. Uh, DJ Lagaway, maybe he's going to be the answer quickly, but I just don't see it. I think that Graham Mertz is promising, but overall this team is just, it's going to be tough. It's going to be tough. But I will say this, if you beat Miami and you beat Texas A&M 
and you beat UCF and you beat Miss State and you beat Sanford, you're five and zero heading into a road game against Tennessee. Like you can build up some of that momentum, but that second half of that schedule, Georgia at Texas, LSU, Old Miss at Florida State. That that's murderous row. That's For sure. maybe one win there. But if you get if the ball rolls your way early on in the season, you can get five or six wins and then maybe win a game or two. Because obviously, like we look at the schedules prehand preseason, but Georgia Tech's at uh, Texas, LSU, Old Miss, Florida State, one of those teams is not going to be good. No, if yeah. somebody all one of them is not going to be yeah. top ten like they are projected <laughs> going into the season. And I agree. I got Florida at 12 here. Like you said, if you can find a way to beat Miami week one, you beat Sam for week two. If you if you can get up to five and zero oh in the first part of the season, then I mean you get Kentucky in the second half at home. That's a winnable football game. You get LSU at home. That's a winnable football game. Old Miss could be a winnable football game at home. Um, so you have plenty of opportunities for me. I think the and, big thing is Billy Napier has to go seven and five this year mm-hmm. um, to avoid a lot of heat on him. I think he could survive at six and six. He's not going to get will, fired up to this year unless they get, unless they go like four and eight. I think five I think and he seven five he'll and seven. stay around for one more year. Um, but I think if he goes seven and five, that'll kind of that'll kind of take the heat off of him a little bit. Mm-hmm. Because again, you got to understand too, and I know the administrators and the people in charge at Florida understand too. Florida may have the toughest schedule in college football. Um, and, and so in a team that's rebuilding, not only that, the thing I just don't like about Florida is they have so much stuff going on with them. They got a former quarterback suing them who transferred. Hey, they yeah. had that stuff going on. Um, Shockingly, he's at Georgia. Yeah. Hey, One he of, may end up in jail before anybody from Florida. Ends. Their best, I believe, cornerback is now suspended from team activities um, yeah. for recording all kinds of stuff. Uh, there was a alarm clock. Um, Travis Etienne is gone. Or Trevor, no, Trevor Etienne. Etienne. Yeah, he transferred out. So Florida's in a bit of a mess, and really none of it is stuff Bill and Napier can really control. Um, and so that's been the tough part for it. But I don't see Florida doing much more than 12. Moving on, number 11, who do you have there? I got Kentucky. I could see Florida – hopping over Kentucky. I could see that. And to be honest, I wouldn't be opposed if you did have that. But at the end of the day, I just think Kentucky's a safer bet. I think that Kentucky is in a better place as a program. Uh, you got Brock Vandergriff, the Georgia transfer coming in, a former five-star uh, to be your quarterback. And obviously Kentucky has found some luck. Uh, not Well, not even luck, but some good talent out of the transfer portal, whether you look at Vandergriff or whether you look at uh, Devin Leary or uh, Will Levis, obviously the big success. Um, so I think Kentucky's in a good spot um, in some ways. Obviously, Mark Stoops, nowhere near the hot seat. But is he going to win you a New Year's Six game? Probably not. Not in the new, not in the new SEC where they also have Texas and Oklahoma. Um, but is Kentucky a solid average program in the SEC? Yeah, they're they're a little bit below average. This year, but overall, they'll be solid. They'll probably win seven, eight games. For sure. Yep. I I have them sitting at uh, 11 as well. Um, I look at the schedule, and it's pretty favorable through six games for sure. Southern Miss, South Carolina, you do play Georgia, um, but it is a home game, which, I mean, that's you're still going to get crushed, but it at least can give you some a false sense of hope. (laughs) Um, Then you get Ohio. Then you do got to go at Old Miss, but then you get Vanderbilt at Florida. That's a winnable game. Auburn at home, a winnable game. At Tennessee, honestly, that's a winnable football game. Uh, Murray State, and then at Texas, and then Louisville. I could see Kentucky winning seven, eight games this year. Um, I, I think that Barry and Brown and Dan Key at wide receiver are going to be great targets for uh, Brock Vandegrift. And I, I think that Kentucky has a going to have a pretty solid offense as well as returning nine starters defensively on this team. Um, it's it's going to be a, a very talented team for Kentucky. I just don't know if they have the talent to compete with the big dogs that will get them, um, you know, that will get them higher up in the rankings. That's That was the biggest thing for me. So moving on to number 10, who do you have there? Number 10, I got um, Texas A&M here. So I think the Aggies are in a better spot under Mike Elko than they are under Jimbo Fisher. Jimbo Fisher obviously was – a big swing and a miss for the university. Like let's just let's not mince words. It was a big swing and a miss. Uh, it is what it is. Um, but when you're looking at this team, when you're looking at AM, 
excuse me, you do have some pieces there. You do have some ways in which I think you can um, improve. Um, at quarterback, you got Connor Wegman. Um, you do have some pieces at wide receiver, um, but overall your defense was decimated by the transfer portal. And you're just looking at all sorts of issues. You got a home, home game week one against Notre Dame, and I just, that's going to be a tough game um, to be able to win. Outside of that, you got a road game against Florida, the swamp, not an easy place to play. Um, and then you got a neutral site game against Arkansas. If this season gets off rough, it's going to be hard to be able to turn it around. But don't get me wrong, September, uh, November 30th, I'm watching that Texas Texas A&M game. That's going to oh, be yeah. a fun match. That'll matchup. be the game. Um, but outside of that, I just think that this Texas A&M team, outside of the middle of the pack, I just don't see them separating themselves year one under Elko. But Elko is a good hire, and I think the right hire. Um, so I think they're in a good spot, but right now, middle of the pack. So I agree as well. I think that, that Ole Miss – I mean, not Ole Miss. Texas A&M is going to have a, a very – Solid season, especially an improvement from last year. Um, when I look at this team, the biggest thing for them is Wiegman at quarterback has to stay healthy. You look at AM over the last two years, they've had seven different quarterbacks play in games due to injuries, and you just can't do that. You, you've got to have more consistency and more availability at the quarterback position. But if he stays healthy, you bring back some, some very good weapons, um, I don't think this is the year for AM where they really take a big step forward. I think that is next year with Wiegman with a full year under his belt, Elko a full year under his belt, time to get his his schemes and his players in there um, through the tra- see through the transfer portal. That is one thing that really helps is Mike Elko can come in and he doesn't have to wait three to four years recruiting cycles to get all of his guys in. He could go out and by next year have a, a majority of them in. Yeah. Um, and so that's that's something that I think will work into the benefit of him. Um, but I, I do think A&M will have a pretty solid season. I think they'll win seven, eight games this year um, and, and have a pretty good finish to the season. But I just – I don't see them finishing higher than 10. They won't be losing or almost losing to UMass at halftime. Let's no. Put it that way. No, yeah. So number nine, uh, we're almost halfway through. Uh, Oklahoma Sooners. Um I'm just not super high on Oklahoma this year. Uh, Jackson Arnold is uh, playing quarterback for him, obviously, with the transfer of Dylan Gabriel, um, moving on to Oregon. Um, Oklahoma's just – they got a tough schedule. They got Houston and Temple and Tulane um, in the non-conference. Their only super easy win is against Maine. Um, Outside of that, it's not going to be like easy sledding. Uh, you're not going to be able to almost – you're not going to be able to pull out an almost loss to UCF. You're just not going to be able to do that. You're not going to be able to give up 45 points to TCU. You give up 45 points to a TCU-like team uh, in the SEC, you're going you're gonna to get massacred. Yeah, because you're not hanging 70 in that game. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, you're looking at this team. I just think that they're in a good spot coming into the SEC in comparison to where they would have been at with Lincoln Riley. Uh, defensively. Um, I think Brett Venables has turned around this team defensively, but offensively, I just don't know if they're going to be able to keep up with all the teams. I think that they may struggle uh, in games against at Missouri and at LSU and Alabama and at Ole Miss, like versus Texas at Auburn. Tennessee, like that's a rough SEC schedule. So I also have Oklahoma at nine too. And I think Going to your point with the offense, another thing that really hurts too is you lose your offensive coordinator in Jeff Levy. Yeah. So not only do you lose all these pieces, only bring back two starters offensively, but now your offensive coordinator is gone too. And I, I agree. I think the defense for Oklahoma is going to be really solid. I think it'll be top half of the SEC, probably top five, top six. They have a lot of good players, uh, maybe the best linebacker, um, definitely top three linebacker in the SEC and Danny Stutzman. Um, but uh, like you said, just offensively, there's, there's not really anything offensively that's guaranteed for Oklahoma other than Gavin Salchuk. That's about it. You know, he's going to be a tough, hard runner for you all season long and and have a thousand yard season. But other than that, you don't really know what's going to go on offensively. And so that's why I have the Sooners at number nine, but moving on to number eight, number eight, I got them LSU Tigers, my family, 
uh, Brian Kelly. Um, honestly, I, I was telling Lincoln this before we started recording. I don't know what Brian Kelly made it down to the Bayou because I don't know why his defense at LSU is struggling and he is a Heisman winning quarterback. I, I just, I don't get this. Um, middle of the pack, honestly, like it, it, it's a team that they could be a couple spots higher, a couple spots lower. Um, and I want to have a much of an issue, but they're kind of stuck in between like, I think six through 11. Um, I think that that's kind of their range. Um, and I think that they're in a tough spot uh, overall, but Garrett Nussmeyer is a good quarterback, but he's not Jalen Daniels, but you should improve in other areas. We'll see. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of concerned about this defense. I don't know what to think. So we'll see. So Yeah. For me at number eight, I have Tennessee. Um, this is a team. I'm not the biggest fan of Nico. I, I haven't seen a ton out of him. Um, I mean, he pl he played well in the bowl game against Iowa, but it's against an Iowa team who had a lot of um, a lot of opt outs defensively. Um, so you know they they lose a lot, especially defensively. Offense, I still think they're going to be fine though because they have weapons and they have the talent. And Hypo is a great um, offensive minded coach. The problem I see is defensively. They only bring back three starters all on the D-line. That secondary is a mess. When you look at the teams that play, like I think they lose week two against NC State um, in Charlotte. Um, the, I could see them losing at Oklahoma. Uh, they get Alabama at home, at Georgia. I mean, they do have a pretty – They Tennessee may have gotten the most favorable schedule of any SEC team, um, but it's, it's still just something where I, I don't trust this defense. I think that they're going to give up a lot of points this season. Um, and I think that they're, I think they're just going to get out outmatched all, on both lines of, of scrimmage all season long. Um, and so I'm, I'm not a big fan of Tennessee this year. So I have them down at eight. Who do you have at seven? At seven, I got the Auburn Tigers. I like Hugh Freeze. I like where he's at. I like where the program's moving. Um, and honestly, I think that they're in a good position to continue to improve. Um, and I think that when it comes to this uh, Auburn team, at running back, obviously, Jaquez Hunter, um, great running back, um, and Peyton Thorne at quarterback. Eh, hopefully, you can find some sort of hidden gem um, on the bat on the bench, but we'll see. Um, I think Auburn will continue to make improvements. Obviously, Peyton Thorne will probably improve some this year uh, with the RPO system and stuff like that, making better reads, doing that, um, but – Honestly, I think Hugh Freeze is a good head coach, and I think that he could get eight, maybe nine wins this year. So we'll see. I agree. Yeah, I have Auburn at seven as well. I have him at eight and four on the year. Um, I look at Jarquez Hunter. He's the best running back in the SEC. I don't care what you think. He's the best running back in the SEC, and he'll show it again this year. When you look at Peyton Thorne, this is a guy who I think he's going to take a big step forward. You look at him last year, he had zero weapons offensively for him on the outside uh, at receiver. Now you bring in some new guys, you bring in um, some transfers and the big guy um, out there that you recruited at Cam Coleman, five-star receiver. He had a great spring. I expect big things from him. You got Robert Lewis who transferred in from Georgia state, Keandre Lambert Smith coming in from Penn state. Um, and then you also have Perry Thompson that you went out and recruited as well. Another big time guy, four-star wide receiver, um, I think that, that this is going to be a very good offensive team for Auburn. I'm excited to watch them. I think they're going to have a great season and defensively. Um, I think DJ Durkin and Charles Kelly make a great combo at D.C., um, and I, I think that they have some talent to work with back there. I think they'll improve improve that defense, and I think that they could get to 4-4 four and four in the SEC, 5-3 and three in the SEC this year. So looking now on to number six, who do you have there? Number six, I got Tennessee, uh, the real UT, I guess, if we're, yeah. if we're getting into that debate. <laughs> uh, but when it comes to Tennessee, you're looking at a team that I think Nico's in a good spot. And even though, yeah, you are right, they only bring back three defensive starters, but you do have to mention they do bring back the best defensive player in the SEC in James Pierce. Um, yeah. So I think Pierce makes up for a lack of – uh, quantity rather than having quality. Uh, and even they brought in the five-star Jordan Ross at edge. So you could see a lot of potential from the defensive line. And maybe that helps a weak secondary. Because don't get me wrong. I think you're 100% right that it is a weak secondary. But this is a Tennessee team that they put up points. 49, 30, 
uh, 45, 41. Like, this is a team that puts up 53, 48, 35. This is a team that really did a good job at putting up points. The only games that they really struggled in were at Missouri and against Georgia. Outside of those two games, this was a really good uh, really good team in the SEC. Um, and I think we'll continue to improve. Um, I think that they could be better than Missouri, but Nico being a new product, I don't, I, I just don't feel comfortable putting them above Missouri. Yep, for sure. Uh, number six for me, I have LSU. This is a team I think they're going to be very solid uh, defensively, and LSU actually returns the best defensive player in the SEC and Harold Perkins. Um, I like they, he's a dog. Better, but. Reason I go with Perkins is he can pass rush. His pass rush is just as good as Pierce, but he can also drop back into coverage. Yeah, that's why I go with Perkins. He's more of a dual threat type guy. Um, you look at this team offensively; they have some pretty good weapons. Kyron Lacy. Um, now they do lose the two big dogs and Brian Thomas and Malik Neighbors, so that hurts as well as like you mentioned losing the quarterback. But Grant Nussmeyer and AJ Swan, I think, uh, can, can be solid quarterbacks. I expect Nussmeyer to start. I know we we mentioned earlier in the video Swan was pretty disappointing last year at Vanderbilt, but I think that with this team and this system that he could actually have a, a very good season because you he lose is your OC though he is yeah you do lose your OC but um, Swan is a talented player um, obviously or he wouldn't be at LSU um, so I I think that that either one of those guys could be solid options for you obviously Nussmeyer being your first option but I think that um, I think that that. LSU can have a pretty a pretty solid season. Not only that, they get a very favorable schedule. Um, really, the only game that you really look at and say, okay, they're losing this game uh, off in, in the SEC is your choice, either Alabama or Ole Miss. Like they, they have those two teams in there that they probably don't beat, but everybody else is beatable. I could see this team going 10-2. Um, and two. I could see them at, at eight and four. Personally, I have them at, at, at eight and four, nine and three, somewhere in there. Um, but this is a team that I expect to be pretty good this year. So moving on to number five, we have Alabama. Well, you have, I have Alabama. Alabama. Yeah, Gosh, I bad. think I figured for the top five, I'd switch. I go first. Go right a second. Um, I have Alabama. Um, this is a team who they just lose so much between just coaching staff turnover. Um, just actual players leaving, entering the transfer portal. Um, I'm not the biggest fan of Jalen Milrow. I don't think DeBoer seemed to be the biggest fan of him either. Um, so that that could be something as well. And I just – I think Alabama has a talented roster. Um, you know, I just – I do think that they lack the weapons on the outside at wide receiver that they've had in years past. And I look at this team and this schedule, and I, you know, it's a pretty favorable schedule for the most part. Um, but it's, it's just a team that I just, I don't know. I think just the expectations and all the pressure on them from what Saban left behind, I think, is going to be a little too much year one for DeBoer, um, following in his footsteps. And I, I think that that Alabama ends up coming in fifth, but I do think they go like nine and three. Yeah, yeah. And number five, I have the Missouri Tigers. Um, honestly, I just don't trust Drinkowitz um, totally. Like, I have him at five, but to repeat what they did last year, you do bring back Brady Cook, you do bring back Luther Burden and Theo Weiss, and you do bring back some defensive pieces. Um, but I don't know. I'm just not fully I, – I don't fully trust this team. Uh, but at the end of the day, look, listen to the schedule. Murray State, Buffalo, this is the easiest SEC yeah. schedule in my opinion. Boston College, Vanderbilt, at Texas A&M, Massachusetts on the road. Um, that's 6-0 right off the That's a little right weird the game, bat. though, on the road at UMass. Yeah, I know. Auburn, at Alabama, Oklahoma, at South Carolina, at Miss State, Arkansas. That is the easy – all you play is at Alabama. That's the only game yeah. that you play. And I guess Oklahoma, but Oklahoma, they could struggle. We talked about that earlier. This is a really easy schedule, which is part of the reason why I have them at five. If they had to play Georgia and um, Texas and so on and so Old Miss and stuff like that, I'd have them lower. But this is an easy schedule. They're just going to put up points. Um, you got to really screw this up here, Drinkowitz. If you're not, if you're screwing, this is where you'd have to screw it up in order. 
uh, to not be able to do it. So, yeah. For sure. Yeah, that's – I have Missouri at number four. Oh, um, did you see who their backup quarterback is? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Drew I didn't Bob. know – okay. I'm sorry. I did not know that <laughs> until yeah. just now. I yeah, know. I saw that earlier whenever I was going through their schedule, just looking through stuff. I didn't know what happened to him after Arizona State, yeah. honestly. Yep, he's there now. But I look at Missouri. They better hope Brady, they, they need to make sure he's in a tightly wrapped bubble. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Which I look at this team offensively. They're, in my opinion, second, third best offense in the SEC behind Ole Miss and Texas. Yeah. Um, they might be ahead of Texas a little bit. I personally would take Texas, but you could argue Missouri there. Yeah. Defensively, they're they're pretty solid. They're not the best. They're about middle of the pack um, defensively in the SEC. But the biggest thing for me is this offensive talent mixed with this schedule that they have. They're going to put points up on everybody, and most of these teams just don't have an offense good enough to score as many points as Missouri's going to hang on them. Um, you know, like I – you look at some of these offenses, like Boston College couldn't drop 40 points on a high school team. Yeah. Um, so, you know, Missouri's going to have no problem with some of those teams like that. It's it's going to be pretty pretty easy schedule for Missouri for sure. But moving on to number th- – uh, or no, you still got to do your number four. Who you got? Uh, number four for me, I got Alabama. Um, I think Bama is in a – Decent spot, don't get me wrong. Saban did probably leave them in probably one of the most vulnerable spots they've been in in a few years. Uh, Milro obviously is, a, I think, a good quarterback, uh, and I think he could improve, but I do agree the wide receiver weapons are at some of the worst levels they've ever been at uh, under uh, under Nick Saban and now under uh, Kalen DeBoer. Um, but I think this Alabama team, they're in a good spot overall. Uh, defensively, they'll be good. Um, they're going to have to figure some things out, but I don't think that they're going to have as many issues that they, as they had at the beginning of last year either. So, I agree, yeah. I think they'll at least know know their quarterback and, and kind of what he can do and what he brings to the table. For me at number three now, I have Texas. I think they're going to have a pretty good start to their SEC time. Uh, they end up getting a pretty favorable schedule. Only tough game is they get Georgia in October for the most, I mean, that's really the only tough game they have within the SEC. Uh, Now they have to go at Michigan week two. That is going to be the biggest game of that week. I'm excited for that one. Personally, I think they, I think they kill them. Um, But yeah, pretty favorable schedule for Texas. Looking at it, they might have the easiest schedule. They play nobody. Yeah. Um, Of course, Oklahoma is always going to be tough because it's the Red River. They were Robbery. supposed to play Georgia until they changed to being in the SEC this year. Or no, Georgia, Oklahoma was Yeah, that was Oklahoma. Yeah. Texas plays Georgia this year. Um, and so – but I look at this Texas team defensively, I think they're a little bit skeptical. Um, now, they do, especially in that back end in the secondary, Michael Penix lit them up in the playoff yeah. last year. But you look, I mean, they do add a few pieces – um, they bring back two starters. They bring in Makuba, Andrew Makuba from Clemson in the transfer portal. Uh, let me just warn you, he's going to be no help on a deep ball. Um, everything in front of him, he's going to be a lead at. If it's a deep ball and he's got to keep up with somebody and chase them down, yeah, you might as well forget about it. Uh, they bring in Isaiah Bond to help replace the two big receivers they lost when Worthy and Mitchell um, from Alabama. They get Bond from Alabama. I think that'll be pretty good. The biggest thing for me is they return that whole offensive line and Jaden Blue and C.J. Baxter back. Texas may have the best running back room in the SEC, but I think for me defensively that is going to be the biggest thing for them, and so I have them finishing at third. So for three, for me, I have Old Miss. I like Old Miss. I think that they're in a good spot. I think roster-wise, they're in a good spot. I think head coaching-wise, they're in a good spot. But when it comes to overall presence as a team, I cannot trust Old Miss to be able to make the SEC championship until they prove it. If it was the old system that they were in where East and West and Texas and Oklahoma weren't in the conference. And yeah, I'd pick them to make it, but not with Texas and Georgia in the same conference at number three. I got Ole Miss. I have Ole Miss at number two. They're going to prove it to you this year. Ole Miss is going to the SEC championship. They have the best offense and maybe the entire country. When you look at these weapons, they have Trey, Trey Harris, Juice Wells. Um, and then at running back, Ulysses Bentley, Jackson Dart at quarterback, defensively they finally have some big pieces 
um, particularly that huge playmaker right there in the middle of that D-line, Walter Nolan. Um, you know, that is going to be huge for them, uh, getting him from Texas A&M. And then also Princely Umana Milan. Uh definitely <laughs> not how you say that, but you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Uh, he was second team all SEC last year at Florida and uh, had seven sacks for him. Those two guys on that D-line, Ole Miss may have the best D-line in the SEC this year. Um, it's it's, it's going to be tough. Georgia's will probably be better, but Ole Miss is going to have a, a very good defensive line. The secondary is more improved as well as they bring in some transfers in the back end. Um, they get a uh, Trey Amos from Alabama. So they bring in a lot of pieces on this defense to kind of fix it because that's really been the only problem for them. Um, is that an offensive line? But they, they patch up the offensive line as well. Ole Miss is going to have a great season. I'm excited to see what Lynn Kiffin can do with this team. Yeah, at number two, I got Texas. So we got Texas and Ole Miss flip-flop. But at the end of the day, I think Texas, they're just a little bit more proven. Quinn Ewers, um, I think, is a better quarterback than Jackson Dart is. Um, and I think that this Texas team, uh, you do lose a lot up the middle. Don't get me wrong with uh, Colborne and um, who's the other guys? I should know this. Uh, uh, Kendrick Colburn and – What's his name? I picked him in like – Devondre Sweat. Oh, yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. I'm about to say uh, I picked him in every mock draft I did because yeah. I loved it. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I think that you lose a lot up the middle. But outside of that, uh, wide receiver-wise, I think you'll be fine. You have plenty of weapons there. Don't get me wrong. Uh, Mitchell and Worthy were great wide receivers. I think, it, like, look at their draft status. They, they're great wide receivers. But I think that uh, Texas has enough to replace them. Uh, obviously, running back room, like you said, is fantastic. Um, and line should be good. Secondary, I think that this Texas team, just simply put, they're in a good spot. So I got them at number two. And, well, number one, I don't think this is much of a shocker. No, we got uh, we both got Georgia at number one. Although I am a little concerned with having them at number one because if they keep this rate up, they might <laughs> they might not have a team by the time season starts. Hey, I mean the Cobb County Detention yeah. Facilities football team, man, they are yeah. looking elite this. They're year. They're elite oh, this man. year, but uh, yeah, Georgia. They return nine starters offensively. Um, they bring back the best team without a doubt, the most talented team. They have the best head coach in the conference and in just the whole country in general. Yeah. Kirby Smart's the new Nick Saban, um, and which is funny because five years ago people were saying Kirby Smart's the next Mark Richt, mm -hmm. and now they're saying he's Nick Saban. So yeah. um, people have had a bit of a hard time making up their mind with this guy, what he is. But 94 and 16 in eight years at Georgia, he's been elite. Georgia's been elite under him the entire time. They're going to have a big season. At most, I see them with one loss. At most, yeah. and I I have them going undefeated. Yeah, um, they get they get Clemson in week one. Not likely. I think Georgia wins that game. It's possible they they lose a close one. You look, they got to go at Alabama. Not likely, but again, they could lose it at Texas. That would be the one I would put money on for them to lose if they lose one. Yeah. Um, and then they also have at Ole Miss, so they have four games in there that you could say are are kind of. Tough games. Tough games. It's not an easy schedule. It's not going to be an easy schedule at all for them, but I think that they're battle-tested. I think their coaches and their players are good enough to get them through that schedule undefeated. But that's going to wrap up today's video. We appreciate all of you guys watching. Go check out College Football Roundup where this video will be posted and subscribe over there as we'll be having the rest of our conference predictions coming out um, soon as we get closer to college football season. But we appreciate everybody.